All right, welcome to I Am KNS Breaks YouTube channel. Today we are on the road at Roscoe's Remodeling uh, to work on his BMW M2 Competition Coupe. Uh, he's one of the few brave souls that will take this thing on the track and uh, show people what it can do. Uh, he bought the M2 about six months ago. He's uh, run several events up at uh, VIR Raceway in uh, Virginia. He's got some arrow on the car. He's running a track pad, of course. And what we're gonna look at today are some replacement brake rotors made by GiroDisc for this car. They're two-piece rotors. Uh, GiroDisc is well established as a quality uh, rotor brand. Everything made in the US, by the way, up in Bellingham, Washington. And today we're gonna take a look at the brakes on the car show the results of what Roscoe got when he tracked the car with the OEM rotors and race pads and uh, go over the install as well because a few things you might want to see. So we're going to take a look at the front rotors uh, for the uh, M2 Competition Coupe. These things are pretty big. I think the rotor is actually 400 millimeters in diameter and 38 millimeters thick. That's as big as it gets. Love to hear this packaging. Everything's well made, well packaged. You'll receive the rotors just like this if you were to elect to purchase them. So yeah, look at that sucker. I'm not sure if you can quite get the idea there, but uh, that is ginormous. That's a 400. That's also, I think an 80, 72 or 82 being curved this 38 millimeters thick. That is definitely a big brake rotor. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get the install started. Put this on the car here and uh, get some more video up here in a minute. If we go ahead and look at what, what's happening with Roscoe, the discs are a little rusty now. Uh, and you can see he ran his pageant yellow brake, down, brake pads down almost to the backing plate uh, doing track use. He just got back from Road Atlanta. Uh, but you can see he gets some pretty good cracks at the holes. The rust is there a little bit. But you can see the cracks starting at the holes. These are pretty done. There's a good bit of a lip too. So this is about time for replacement. Uh, you wouldn't want to run those too much longer because those cracks will try to jump out to the edge. And uh, that obviously is uh, not great if you were on track. This is a mono block caliper, so the caliper has to come off for a pad swap in this car. But in this case, the rotors are coming off, so we'd have to do that anyway. Don't think there's any real special tools. I'm sure it's a big bolt holding this caliper on that's very tight. Uh, the only other thing to notice, this is BMW's pin drive two-piece style rotor. It's a little weird. You only buy them as an assembly. I'm not sure how that sort of happens that way, but uh, uh, everything looks pretty straightforward, though. So. Uh, We'll have a go at it and uh, be right back with you. Uh, we got one of the front OEM rotors off along with one of the Girodisc. Uh, you can see his well-used pageant yellow race pads. Everything in this car is supersized. I mean, it's a large brake pad. Anyway, let's take a look at the OEM disc. BMW, this has got a millimeter or so material off, so it's somewhat lighter than it started. It's weighing in at about 28 pounds. Now we do notice right away a bit denser vein design on the Girodisc ring. We'll talk about that in a sec, but let's go ahead and weigh it first just to see where we end up. And our super accurate scale says that oh, it's about 29 pounds. So you are getting about a pound of, pound of mass there. Uh, of note, however, if we look at the veins, now this is hard to see, but the density of the vein design, the number of veins on the gear just is much higher. It looks like about twice. Uh, so that should uh, that should be pretty helpful in terms of uh, mass to absorb heat and uh, you know cooling as well. You'll, you know, these curved vein rotors will move a lot of air. So this should be a pretty good improvement in durability. Uh, additionally, of course, it's flo a floating design, uh, tab mount, versus the pin drive uh, OEM rotors, and most importantly, not drilled, because I know it's hard to see on this used, it's rusty, but obviously all these cracks starting with the holes, uh, we won't have any of that with the uh, gyro disc. Okay, so the brake pads are obviously worn, so the pistons are all the way extract uh, out, we gotta push them back in 
so that we have room for the new pads to go in there. So in this case, Roscoe is prying from the top side and you can see that'll go back slowly. Now, if your brake fluid is topped off at the master cylinder reservoir, you may want to take a little bit of that out because as you push these pistons back in, it's going to push fluid back into the master cylinder. And you'll know that happens when it uh, starts coming out of the bottom of the car because you forgot to do that step. So you can see he's just prying them back gently. The piston should go right back in with a little bit of resistance. Uh, so now that one's out. So you'll need to keep something in there because if you push the other three pistons in from the other side, they're going to try to pop out on this side. So you get something there to hold it and you do the same thing on the back pad to push that back in. And you want to make sure you got them all the way in because the pads are going to fill up all that space. And uh, if you're trying to manhandle that caliper back onto top of the rotor with the pads in there and you don't have the pistons pushed back in enough, they won't fit right and you'll, you'll be restarting. So you can see that pad trying to come out from pushing on the other side. So you just got to work it back and forth a few times. Uh, pretty reasonable. You do get the opportunity to scratch and dent your beautiful M calipers as well. So that's, that's an added bonus. Okay. But uh, it is a track car, so that's what happens. So that looks good. You can't see the other side. We can't really get the camera in there, but that is pushed back all the way. So now we're going to go through with the rest of the install. Pretty simple. We got a set screw on the holding the rotor here to the hub. Both come out easily. Then there's two uh, Torx drive bolts holding the caliper down into the bracket. Uh, a couple of pins for the pads. Caliper will come off. And we'll use this very handy, reusable giant tie wrap thingy to hold up the caliper while we replace the rotor and we'll put the pads into the caliper slide it back on put the pins back in and off we go so uh this is pretty pretty straightforward though go ahead and watch So you should uh, clean this hub surface a bit, that rust, you can see those pins, you want to make sure it gets flat. I mean, mostly you just want to feel for any large pieces of grid or anything that would prevent the rotor from sitting flat. I don't prefer to use any, any type of anything on here, a little bit of rust isn't hurting anything. Like I said, just make sure there's no large pieces. You may have different results if you live up in the Northeast or something, but uh, anyway, I think what we're doing here is just fine. So now we got the new rotor to put on. Just have to make sure and line up those two set screw holes and the pins. So it looks like, looks like that ought to do it. There we go. So we've got the uh, rotor back into the hub. Clean all that grease off of there. Dust, it's no big deal. If you want to check the fitment of the pad and the caliper, sometimes you may have to clean up the edge a little bit to get them to get in there. Uh, I don't generally put any grease or anything on racing pads. There's no shimmer. I think it can make some noise. That's what happens. So we did clean these up a little bit. Let's get those in there okay. Yep. So we got our fine. There's one. So slide in there now comes the fun part you gotta hold all this and get it over the rotor which is why we were saying to make sure you have those pads pushed back there we go have your bolt ready a couple threads in there so we can no longer worry about the dangling caliper Make sure you get both bolts started before you start tightening so you can get them going. I don't have the torque spec for this handy. My guess is it's about 50 or 60 foot pounds. 
We'll let the owner's arm dictate that for the moment. Hey, Roscoe. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd like you to do the honors here. Okay. However tight you want your caliper bolts. All right, so everything's now installed. You can see the one last thing is you are gonna to have to manage to push these pads up against the hold down spring to get the pin to go through. And that's a little bit of fun. So you wanna get one started. So it's pretty fun to pry this. Okay, you should be able to let go. Once you get it, don't let it out. Get it across, you catch the other one. Definitely wanna, those spin, pins are pretty, pretty stout. The front side, you can push with your hand. Put some pressure on it. Not quite enough there. There we go. Tap until you hit it go solid. Should have heard that stop. Get a couple more. Same thing. Last thing, that's done by the way. The only things you're just suggest due to the pad shape here on the inner radius. You just want to make sure you have a couple of millimeters there clearance so that the pad does not hit the hardware. As you can see it's fine. There's at least three in there, so that's good to go. So these are installed and ready to go. And uh Roscoe will be at CMP in just a few days. Monday. New pavement, very hard on brakes. We'll, see, like, we'll be interested to see what he's got left of these after a day of CMP, because it is notorious for brake pads and tires as well, although with the new pavement, that might be considered a bit better. We'll take a quick look at the rear, by the way. We have the uh, rotors available for the rear as well. We'll do an install on those very shortly, but for the moment, his OEMs are still fine. <coughs> the pad installed much easier a more normal Brembo style caliper right into the top of two pins. He did the full pad swap on the rear and half the time it took me to do the pad swap in the front and help me in the front at the same time. So there we go. Pads with yellows, Geodisc rotors, BMW N2 comp. Thank you. And this is why these are useful. Oh, snap. Your snap tie unsnapped. Caliper went swinging. We want to edit that out. <laughs>